So what is the plan? Well, I thought about a lot of different options that I could do. You know, everybody wants to put a motor at each wheel around the car. I thought about that for about uh, five minutes and then threw it out the window. Basically the biggest issue is getting a motor that can make the amount of power that you need that fits inside the wheel, 16 inch wheel, uh, and how you're gonna keep the brakes there. I mean, this is like a massive engineering project. Second plan, I was like, okay, let's play to the strengths. Solid axle, can we have one motor on the front axle, one motor on the rear axle? Yeah, twice as many motors, twice as many controllers, uh, lots of fabrication, and I, it would really increase the weight of that solid axle. So okay, so then you move those motors to the chassis and you have drive shafts. Well, if you're doing that, you might as well keep the transfer case and just use a single motor. Because uh, you know, dual motors are great, but if you're not gonna actually use twice the power, then a single motor is uh, just fine. So I've been looking you know, at all the different options. I could get like a brushed DC motor, you know, that everybody thinks of when they think of like a, a golf cart or an old RC car, you know, uh, br has brushes in it, you know, spins, you know, that's about it. And they're, they're pretty cheap, you can do it, uh, buy a controller, buy this, that, and the other for them, and uh, build yourself an electric vehicle. Well, that's kind of boring. Um, I was looking around on the internet, finding out uh, the different things that you could do. And one thing that people had been doing is buying uh, production EVs like um, Teslas or Bolt Chevy Bolts or even Volts or uh, Lexus hybrids or uh, Nissan Leafs. And then they take the components out of those things and put them into their custom built car. I thought that was really cool because you're getting modern technology, right? So no brushed motors, right? This is brushless motors, uh, Perna Magnet AC motors, really high tech stuff with inverters. They can do regen. And then also when you buy one of those EVs, you can get things like the chargers, you know, the, the plug-in public charging uh, adapters, the Chatamo, the fast chargers, or CCS, you know, all of these things open up. And also, of course, you get a lithium battery with those cars. Well, a lot of them are kind of expensive. The Teslas and the Chevys are very expensive. Uh, the Nissan Leafs are pretty cheap, actually. What I decided to do was go the Nissan Leaf option because there's this thing called the Resolve EV VCU. And what this allows you to do is basically take all the components from the Nissan Leaf and control them in your custom controller. So now you don't need to worry about taking all the stuff out of the leaf. You just need the three main components, the motor, the inverter, and the charger assembly, and the wiring harnesses. And you can have uh, plug them into this thing and basically run everything just like factory. It even has like a little LED display that'll tell you your battery charge and things. This is super cool because you, not only can you run the motor, run the BMS and the battery, access all, all the data like the power usage and the, the cell voltages, but with the Resolve EV, you can actually keep the factory chargers. So you can keep the Nissan Leaf uh, 1772, basically home or public charger. And then also my Leaf has a Chatamo fast charger. So you can keep that and it'll run just like factory, which is super awesome. So that is what I plan to do with this Land Cruiser. And as you can see, I'm wearing a Car Wizard shirt because I just got back from Kansas and I bought another Nissan Leaf. I got another Salvage Leaf because I, I'm getting into this big time. I need a, new, a battery for this one because remember the first Leaf I got, the battery's going into my electric. So I need a battery for this car. It comes with the motor and stuff. So maybe I'll do another EV conversion or maybe I'll sell it. But really cool thing about this shirt, I don't know if you can see it, but I got the, all the crew to, to sign it. So I got the Car Wizard and Crazy D to sign it on the back and then Magic Mike signed it on my shoulder. So that was super cool to go meet those guys. And uh, I told them a little bit about my project, but you know, they have stuff to do. They got a lot of hoopties to fix. So uh, I, I just got out of there. I had to get back on the road, but it was awesome to meet those guys. And now, I mean, we got nothing left to do, but but dive in, right? So great, I got that another leaf. 
Uh, got this free and clear like you saw in my last video and now I'm ready to start my project. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull the motor and transmission out. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you some footage from some off-road off -road driving that I did with this truck because I wanted to get a baseline of it. So basically you can see that it's gonna need to be waterproof. It's gonna be, need to be rugged and tough because it's gonna be tossed around and, and thrown all over the place. And it's gonna need to be reliable because we're up in the mountains in the middle of nowhere. So for those three reasons, I think that the Nissan Leaf parts are gonna be a great choice uh, because they are factory OEM parts um, that have all of the rigorous testing that goes along with that. Today's the day we're gonna take the engine out of the 80. It drove in here for the last time. And we got uh, Don and Josh and Nick and Adam. And uh, we're all gonna help. And Don's gonna work on his 80 at the same time putting a lift on his truck. So we're gonna take drain all the fluids first, pull the radiator, and then just start pulling everything out. We're gonna try to keep everything in good condition and uh, hopefully get it done in a day. All right, so we're getting close to pulling it out. We got most of it, everything loose. Ready? Yeah. Push. There you go. Get it? <laughs> pulling the transmission right now. And uh, overall it's coming together. It leaks like so much oil. Everything is leaking. All the hoses, all the gaskets. So it's a really good thing that we're taking this thing out. Never to return. All right, we have almost freed the engine. It's hanging on by a thread. We're really trying to remove the transfer case shifter. The transfer case is here. Here's the big tra automatic transmission. It's been fighting with us all day. Ow! It'll still fuck me. <laughs> there it goes. Hey, God Almighty. When was the last time you took a deep breath? <laughs> Never. You good? With one. <laughs> Got three more to go. Go to the right. Hey, uh, the 50-50 mix of oil. That's right. He didn't even go at an angle, so... Let's see if I can put my thumb in the way of something this time. Nice. Nice, yeah, I'll just use some wire nuts. It's just red green with the other red green. Just, just 20 wire nuts on there. <laughs> wire nuts. Man, I pulled out so many wire nuts off that Chevy. <laughs> so he's an electrician. <laughs> Sorry, Dominic. That's all right. Let me go ahead and start changing the. Pull point, like move it up, so you can start to tilt it down. Mm -hmm. 
forgot the jack stand. It's like the, uh, the gas can, but the recall one. It's the whole stop game. Like the jerry can, it's actually a wavy jerry can. It's just got the only bad thing about it is that stupid California compliant uh, yeah. nozzle. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, it's like the Jack Daniels one. Yeah, it's like the Jack Daniels one. I went to Florida in July once. What a mess. I saw the only thing that survived Look inside the Look at this. Hey, there's the starter. <laughs> yeah, I see it. The fuel filter is really easy to get to now. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's, that's your assessment. <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> Jesus. Oil leak on the, from the valve cover, maybe? If y'all want to live or roll, let's make sure we don't hit this fucker. Look at all the room for batteries. I'm pretty sure I can fit the electric motor in the transmission tunnel back yeah, yeah. under the cowl. Oh my god, this is just a cavernous hole under here. Yeah, it is. That's what I'm saying. Come yeah. on. That's pretty much my goals for the today, so we'll just clean up. We got like made the biggest mess in the world. <laughs> Do you have any oil absorbing? Maybe. Alright, so we got the motor and everything freed up from the Nissan Leaf electric motor. So that's really the output spline there. And I've got it sitting next to the massive Land Cruiser engine. This is the massive six cylinder, 4.5 liter with the tra automatic transmission. And so basically, essentially, we'll be replacing all this with this little guy. So uh, when it sits in the truck, I think the electric motor might be kind of over here a little bit and then I'll have to have a little short drive shaft to my black box doubler which is then going to go to the input of the transfer case. So in the stock configuration the transfer case is bolted onto this mating flange here. So this is um, the transfer case is not going to move it's going to be here uh, in the same spot in the vehicle. And then I'm gonna have a black box doubler, which I think is like six to eight inches long. And then from the output of that, I'll need a drive shaft made it uh, to the output of my Nissan Leaf motor here. So that's the plan. That thing only weighs like, I don't know, like less than hundred pounds, 60 pounds, 70 pounds maybe. Whereas this weighs like almost a thousand pounds. And this, the difference is just stark. It's just amazing, like the scale. So this whole thing is just going to be replaced by this little guy. You can see this is the main three-phase high current input. And it's water-cooled. There's a coolant hoses go there. Just all in all, really cool. Alright, so mechanically, what are we going to do? 
Well, we're gonna keep the transfer case in this truck, the stock transfer case, so that I can have a high low range for off-road driving. And also I'm gonna get a second transfer case that is called a black box that will bolt onto my original transfer case. And then I'll have a second high low transfer selection uh, gearbox. So I'll basically be able to go in double high for higher speed driving, one in high, one in low for medium speed driving, maybe uh, towing a trailer or driving the mountains. And then I can go low, low for off-road rock crawling because that is my goal to get this thing on the gnarly trails, get it up over some obstacles and really just, just use the full four wheel drive potential of this vehicle, um, get some proper tires on it and everything. But that is my main goal. So that is really why I need the two transfer cases. So I have enough reduction ratio that this thing is not only capable of rock crawling like a beast that a Land Cruiser is supposed to be, but also being safe because I don't wanna be stuck on one of them huge arches in Moab and suddenly you're stalling out or cogging the motor and, and you start to roll backwards. Because remember, if you don't got uh, an engine like this, then you just have a gearbox going through a permanent magnet motor, which if it stalls and starts spinning backwards like that, and maybe the computer shuts off, then it's just gonna freewheel and you're just gonna, so I gotta get the brakes 100% on this thing too. That also allows me to ditch the transmission because everybody thinks that you gotta keep the transmission for an electric conversion. And that does make it easier in some respects, but in the other case, it's super heavy and it's like a huge, chunk of, of aluminum and steel and it's it takes up so much space in the vehicle in addition to the weight so i'm going to take that out because in that spot i want to put the motor real close to the transfer case and that way it'll maximize the amount of underhood room for the battery and then as we go we can put batteries in different spots so that's basically the basic mechanical breakdown of how i envision that it's going to work. <laughs> Who knows if we'll be able to get there. It's gonna require fabrication, custom building. I'm gonna to need to get a, like a drive shaft made. I'm gonna to need to weld all on the chassis, new uh, mounts and things. I'm gonna to have to cut things off the car. I'm gonna to have to basically con commit to this, that this is going to be an electric vehicle because it's never gonna go back to stock because it's, too, it's gonna to be too far gone by then.